What's up guys? All right, so I've already got started on this call. Uh, thought it might be good to let you join in on this one once I've gotten to this point. So I'm gonna walk over to this unit and I'll tell you about it as we go. All right, so what's going on? The everything inside's working, outdoor was not. Uh, she's had the thermostat on this whole time trying to get it to run. Um, the capacitor was completely drained. Um, put a new capacitor on it, not working still. The fan comes on, but the compressor does not. So I'll show you real quick how to mega on the compressor with a mega on it. So you want to take the, the cap off right here. And get your leads out. And what I normally do, I'll get like a piece of metal like right here for ground. And then we'll go to each leg, the three on the compressor. So go to the go to the first one. That one's good. That one's good. Good. But what I also seen or felt is this compressor is scalding hot. I mean, it is super hot. So it's probably on a thermal lockout right now. So before we put this uh, the top back on it, we're going to get a hose and we're going to try to cool this compressor off to see if we can get it running because right now when you plug it in just the fan compressor don't even try to start so um, let's try to get this thing cooled off and see if that helps all right so what you want to do you just want to try to cool this thing off <clears throat> and what happens is this thing has been trying to get this compressor to kick on probably all yesterday, all night, all this morning with that capacitor being really low, it just wasn't able to. So it constantly trying to get it to run is overheated it. Um, that's what I'm suspecting at least. But the thing is, you don't want to go to these calls, put on a new capacitor and the compressor not run and be like, back compressor. Because you're going to have people come back behind you and make you look goofy because they, it's going to make it look like you were just trying to sell equipment. So always be honest with, you, with your customers. Always try to figure out or, you know, use all your options before you say it's a bad compressor. Um, but the, the megometer really, really helps. It, it gives you a definite answer on uh, certain things. So I like it, but you're going to want to cool this thing off for, you know, do it for at least four or five minutes and then we'll put this top back on it and uh, see how it does but I'm just gonna keep uh, keep letting water run over it for the next few minutes and we'll start it back all right guys it's been going for about six seven more minutes since I stopped the video and it's much better sides are still a little warm but nothing like it was so that should uh, get it out of that, uh, that thermal switch from being uh, keeping it from running. All right, let's get a couple screws back in it. Truth. We're also going to check if it does come on. We're going to check the amps and all that, make sure it looks okay. And 
It's running. Seventeen point ninety RLA. One point one on the fan motor. So we're under range for sure. Um, because the RLA always is for at its highest peak when it the, the max performance should be drawing. We're not anywhere close to that. So um, that looks good. All right, so I got the probes on it. <clears throat> I'm gonna check it out. So see what our refrigerant looks like. It's just now really kicked on and started running, so we need to let it uh, let it run for about 10 or 15 minutes. See what this is calling for on the sub cooling. 10. So it should be around 10. I think it's going to be pretty good once it uh, gets going for a minute. So let's let it run and then we'll uh, I'll start back when it's been about 10 or 15 minutes. Alright guys, so it's been about 20 minutes. Uh, sub coolant should be about 10. It's running 5. And you can see I, I went ahead and hooked up the probes inside. The Delta T is running just a little low. It should be a little better than that. Um, so According to the subcooling, um, that should be 10. We're going to add a little refrigerant, see if we can get this thing cooling a little better. All right, so this is going to be a very minor adjustment um, to get this thing where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and add a little refrigerant to it. That was about four ounces. I think that's probably going to be about where it needs to be, so we'll let it run for a while. Delta T is looking better. I think before I even put the refrigerant in, I seen that it got to almost 17. So that's that's uh, that's good. But we, it's pretty mild right now because it's earlier in the morning. So it really should be bumping 20. So let's see. Uh, let it run for a minute. Let's see where this Delta T gets to, and if our if our subcooling stays about where it should be, and uh, we might have this thing wrapped up. All right, guys. So that's us. We're dead on where the uh, the dry bulb temperature should be. Um, for the evaporator coil, subcooling stay in around nine and ten. Remember, your subcooling is good if you're at, if you're on it or three degrees above or below. So keep that in mind, so you don't have to always get it dead on. Um, Delta T is bouncing up and down just a little. It was almost to nineteen, but um, this is going to be it, man. This looks good, um, so we can call this one done. All right, so there it is. Um, See, so yeah, I'm gonna go in and get everything finished up with the uh, the paperwork stuff like that. Um, but just remember, this was well. Let me start over. This was the second capacitor that's went out in this unit in four years. So shouldn't really happen, not unless there's a couple power surges, something like that. But um, I'm gonna make sure to stress the importance of keeping an eye on that compressor, especially since it overheated and it was probably doing that for, you know almost a day and a half so checking the amp draw it looked okay it looked like it wasn't over amping but um, I'm gonna let her know that it's possible we might need to replace that compressor at some time um, if it blows another capacitor we really need to look into it more um, but <clears throat> there's just a tip for you if you run into a system that um, the capacitors bad they hadn't turned the thermostat off um, or even if you don't even know if they have or not and you replace the capacitor compressor won't start always open it up and fill the, the compressor if it's super hot 
more than likely it's in a uh, it's in a thermal protection and it's not coming on because it's hot. So uh, either let it sit for about 30 minutes, um, 40 minutes, something like that to cool off, or you can run some water over it to get it happen a little quicker and give that a shot because the last thing you want to do is tell a homeowner their compressor is bad and then it not be or they uh, they want a second opinion have another company come out and they're like nothing's wrong with it so you'll they'll never use you again so just make sure you do the right thing take the right steps um, I would recommend getting a mono, uh, megometer they they just give you a more of a peace of mind and you it's something you could even show the customer you know if it shows bad that's pretty cut and dry where you show them that and it the light goes to bad um, there's not really no arguing that so um, recommend doing that and always check your compressor for a, a thermal protection going on where it's not running just because it's too hot. So, um, and you know, if it makes you feel better and you want to be completely covered, you can always just recommend the compressor being changed. That way, if it if it goes out later on, you know, you was you told them that you recommended go ahead and replacing it because the, it's going through capacitors and it was uh, it ran so hot. So, <clears throat> hope you got a little something from this one. Um, and we'll see you at the next video.